Hey everyone, thank you for providing all your amazing reviews for our Secrets from the Saddle All Things Cycling podcast on iTunes. And I just want to announce our first week's winner is Jody Lynn. Congratulations. Thank you so much for providing an amazing and uplifting review. I really appreciate it. And thank you. I'm glad that you're enjoying the episodes and the podcast and just see the next post or this post right here was her review and I really appreciate it. Thank you much. I sent you a message already on Instagram. I'll need your address so I can send you a really nice little gift. Thank you very much. And next week we'll be drawing another person. So make sure that you get your reviews in, go to iTunes, listen and appreciate and love our episodes, Secrets from the Saddle, All Things Cycling podcast. Love you. Bye. Hey, welcome back to another episode of Secrets in the Saddle, All Things Cycling with your host and coach Sylvie here. So I just have, a, this is my Friday episode and I have some wisdom to lay on you. I was just thinking about this the other day and um, that's when we get in here as coaches to talk about <clears throat> things that maybe you need to hear. Um, so here, before we get started, don't forget that we have a contest going on for the next 10 weeks and it's for reviews. I'm going to be pulling a winner today um, for a prize from those who have reviewed and uh, I'm super excited because we have this contest to get this podcast out to more and more people and I want to give you a prize and a present for offering up your review and your ratings. So don't forget to go to iTunes and place that down and give us some goodness. And I hope that one of my episodes with our amazing coaches really inspires you and touches you and, you know, maybe gets you rolling on your bike because that's what it's all about. Secrets from the Saddle, All Things Cycling is just about everybody and anybody who does cool things with cycling. Um, anyways, we have an amazing episodes coming down, but here, this is what I wanted to talk to you about today. So it's about, um, it's about setting up your goals. So setting up your goals is, you know, it can be anything and not only setting up your goals, but also tracking. I find a lot of people are so quick to stop the program, stop doing what they're doing because they, they don't get the results. They don't see the results, but then again, they're not even tracking the results. So they have no idea what is happening with their body. So, and that's what I want to talk about today is literally being and tracking what you're doing because it's important because you, you, your eyes might not physically see that things are changing, but if you go and see your friend and you've had this before, you see your friend, you haven't seen them in a while. They're like, Oh my God, what's going on? You look awesome. You've lost some weight. You've got more muscles, whatever. And you're just like, what? Really? I don't think so. But seriously, if you're serious about getting into a transformation, and it doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be a physical. We can talk about cycling related goals. You have to set up benchmarks to track those. So what are kind, what are some of the benchmarks to think about? So let's just talk about health and weight loss, weight loss. The first one, because we all know that a ton of people are on weight loss journeys, right? I have this isobody challenge. Um, uh, shirt because I consistently put myself into four month goals or full month challenges to keep myself on track. And it's important to me because otherwise I would, well, you know, kind of be, and I do this like three times a year, every four months, just like, just keep them rolling. And every one of them is different, but that's with my company. So if that's, if you're into something like that, that's something we, you know, reach out to me and we'll talk about that. But here's the thing. So weight loss, what are some of the things you can do to track? 
And this is what I get my clients to do all the time is A, take measurements. Ladies, you will probably not lose weight, but you'll lose inches. And you'll always say like, oh my gosh, I haven't lost any weight. Like the scale's the same, but you have physically changed because muscle weighs more than fat. So while you're transforming your fat to muscle, things are shifting. And you have to stop looking at the, the, you know, the, the scale. Look at it once a month. Look at it in the morning. Look at it in the morning after you've gone pee and you're naked. That's the only time you should ever weigh yourself. Never weigh yourself any other time because you're bloated, you've eaten, you're this, you're that, and always at the same time. In the morning, after you've gone pee, you're naked, you stand on the scale. That's your weight because you've got nothing inside you, you've fasted for the night, and you're empty, right? Bladder's empty, stomach's empty. That's your true weight, okay? Do that if you have to stand on the scale and do it only once a month. Otherwise, take pictures. That's another one. I know people don't like taking pictures. They don't like seeing themselves in their bra and underwear. But if there's anything that's gonna keep you on track, it's gonna see the way you are looking now. And hopefully you're saying like, I don't wanna be like that. Don't show that to me. That's what I want. don't want to be. And that will keep you moving forward. If you have to put it on your damn fridge, this is what I want to move away from. So, you know, scale once a month, measurements, huge. Make sure you measure at the same place, neck, and draw yourself out of stick figure and put numbers and dates. Measure, 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 measure. Measure is pl many places, but make sure they're the same spot every time. And then your pictures. Pictures tell a million stories, people. So, because, you know, even like I just did a two day cleanse and I took pictures and I took pictures of the scale. I, I dropped like three pounds in two days. But I know that that's not realistic because some of it's water, some of it's like maybe visceral fat. Um, and I'm going to put some of that weight back on. That's, it's not going to stay like that. Um, I know that, but now my weight's down and now I can work to maintain that. And, you know, I've, I've shaved off some fat, so I, I'm feeling a little bit more toned and less bloating. Um, but I'm also on my period at the same time. So, you know, I can use that as an excuse, blah, blah, blah. but I took pictures and I took measurements and they all changed. So I would never know that if I didn't do it. And that's why I'm saying, if you're going on track your progress, because if you're on a journey to go from here to here and not back from A to B and not back to A, you want that story. You want to share that. Like I talked to some people, I don't want to share with anybody until I have big transformations. Oh, well, that might be in a year from now. You know, bring people along for the journey. People want to support you. You need support to keep going or else you're going to stop, you know, because a lot of people don't have the true motivation to do it. And I'm here to say that you can do it. It's all up here. And if you have, I was just having this conversation on TikTok this morning when I was doing my live, it's like, if you want to change your life, but you have friends around you, that aren't in the same mindset, you need to shift friends, not forget them, not drop them, but shift friends, move to another group, get into a supportive Facebook group so that you are supported in your journey because those people are going to drag you down. When you're not eating pizza with them and drinking all this alcohol because you want to make a, you know, a lifestyle change, they're, you're going to feel stupid. Like they're going to make you feel stupid, right? You've been there. Everybody's been there. Like, why are you doing that? That's so dumb. Blah, blah, blah. You can desert, you know, all this shit, but you have to move, remove yourself from those kind of situations and move yourself into healthier groups. Um, therefore you won't be enticed and break down to, to fail and basically having them win. 
So they're just waiting for you to fail. You know that. You know, you got that mom or dad that's super negative. Friend, why would you do that? You didn't. you perfect. You're like, no, I want to be better. It's not about getting skinnier or more muscular. It's about making yourself better for you. And whatever that is, you deserve to be there. And you deserve to feel amazing, whatever it is, you know, but those friends are not going to serve you anymore unless some of them come with you, period, you know, and you have to be strong and you have to be rock solid in your commitment to your transformation. And the same with cycling. You want to talk about cycling? Um, it's not quite the same. You have to find ways to measure your improvement. So that's like, this is the more or less fun stuff. But, you know, if you have a hill, if you're like super new and you've always had that, that hill or you have a hill that you're like, okay, I'm going to climb that and I'm going to time it. I'm going to say, okay, I'm going to get a little bit faster throughout the summer. And you go and do that hill once, like one time a week, or like you go and you do a couple little hill repeats once a week, once a week, don't go there every day. No, 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 no. Once a week, you go and train intensity on that hill, or you do like a flat three minute test, uh, see how far you can go. So you do that once every two weeks or something, that little test. Um, you go out to a local time trial. That's kind of, you know, that all depends on how you're feeling, the air, the wind, blah, blah. You know, that's kind of a good and bad gauge, but it's a good gauge. Um, so you have to find something where you can go and test yourself. When you're talking about sports, you know, that could be cycling, running, rowing, um, anything. And it's like practice, 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 practice. It, you're not going to get good on the hills if you don't practice on the hills. And then it's getting skills, skills related to those, um, that sport to help you get faster. Because without skills, you're always going to flounder. You're always going to struggle. And that's like reaching out and asking for help. You know, people hate that. But honestly, if you want to move forward faster, it's about hiring somebody for an hour to give you some tips yeah, so I, I coach one on one. I don't do it often, but it's typically for hills. And I have a place that I go and I coach on technique, right? It's all about technique, how you change your pedal, how you can change your gears, how you spin, how you stand properly, how you sit, all these things make you so much better and faster on your hill. So and then then you have a gauge. So you go and you do this hill once a week and you're like, okay, I'm getting faster going up this hill. I'm getting faster going up this hill and give yourself grace. Cycling takes time. It takes years to get good. So unlike a, a health transformation, depending on where you are, you have to give yourself grace and you have to give yourself time because if you're one of those people that are like, I, I need it now, um, and if it doesn't happen in 30 days, like, salut, you're like, salut, don't even bother starting with me. Go talk to the next coach, you know, cause, um, it just, it's just not a good, uh, partnership because I will never end up making you happy because you're not happy with yourself. You know, I will always be the excuse. So there you go. Two things you know, set yourself up with benchmarks on how to track. Don't stick your damn head in the sand and go, uh, if I don't see big transformations in like two weeks, like this is it. I'm just going to move on to the next. you like, I've had people like that. I'm like, Jesus, you failed before you haven't even started. You know, like I'm on a health goal to build muscle. Do you know how long it takes to build muscle? a long time. It's eating and working out, recovery, sleep. You have to have all these things in place to get results. And the same thing for a health transformation 
and a sports transformation, a sports goal. So with that, I hope that resonated with you or touched you, or maybe that's something you need to hear today. But I coach one-on-ones with people and I help them move forward in, um, in their goals. Sometimes I'm just the person to oversee um, you know, the objective opinion on how to make things fit because people just try and do everything and then they end up doing nothing. So it's making it fit in your schedule realistically. Like you cannot do everything and expect to, you know, move forward. So with that, have an amazing day. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram, like, and comment, um, this podcast, share with friends, remember review, get yourself in the contest. I can't wait to read those reviews and, um, Also, give somebody a prize. I got money and I got prizes to give out and I can't wait to award somebody something. So with that, have an amazing day and have a great weekend.